Hey, everybody. Uh, you guys, I think you can hear me now, right? <clears throat> I'm going to keep my eye on the chat to see if that's a, if there's a yes or a no there. Yes. Okay, great. Uh, hi. Good morning. Good evening. Good afternoon from wherever you are in the world, depending on uh, you know what time zone you're in. I'm coming at you, as always, from beautiful, sunny California. Um, and I've got an icebreaker question for us. Uh, drop your answers in the chat. What would you automate in your sales process if you could? For me, it was always list building. I just like hate messing in spreadsheets and cleaning things up and you know taking the ink out of a company name and that kind of stuff. It just takes forever. Um, deal qualification, customized messages, LinkedIn connections, another list, list builder, lead generator for me. Uh, personalized emails. Okay, well, we, Gary, our next webinar is going to be about AI for personalizing emails. Um, we've got all kinds of stuff coming in. Tax creation, prospecting, list building, industry names. Cool. Uh, CRM ownership and technographics and intent. Well, lucky for you, Caleb, we're going to talk about automating some intent goodness today. Uh, chat GPT integration. Uh, Zach, it's like, it's a little like, it's you know, a little better than chat GPT, but yeah, we're, we're getting it in there. Uh, Dylan, welcome. Welcome. Okay. I'm going to give everybody just like another 40 seconds to trickle in and then we're going to get this show on the road. Email deliverability, personalization. Is there a way to automate a new LinkedIn connect? Tim, I think we actually do have some LinkedIn automation built into Apollo, but LinkedIn is really tricky. They're really smart. And if you, uh, if you automate too much on LinkedIn, they'll, they'll ban you. So that's a tough one there. What does buyer intent really show? Jared, we're going to get into that in a second. Uh, okay. Is that moonshine? Yeah. This is a giant glass of moonshine that I drink during the webinars. No, this is pure water. Um, okay. Creating a new list. Uh, great. We've got all kinds of stuff coming in. Well, let's get this show on the road. All right, everybody. My name is Josh Garrison, and I have a great webinar for you today. We're going to go through a few things, some housekeeping. I'll talk about myself for a second. We're going to get into automation. I'll spend a few minutes in slides just talking about the why. Then we're actually going to hop into Apollo. You guys know the drill. I'm going to show you how to build plays to automate some of your processes. And then we're going to do about 15 minutes of Q&A. So let's do it. Um, if you guys don't know already, obviously this webinar is sponsored by Apollo. That is my employer. It is the world's only end-to-end -end sales engine. And if you don't have an account, you can make one for free at Apollo.io. Uh, some housekeeping items. We are recording the webinar. You will get it as soon as the webinar ends. Actually, if you rejoin this link to Goldcast, it will take you to a recording. Um, I do try and keep an eye on the chat box, uh, but please drop your questions in the Q&A tab. We have the world's greatest Radu Baduva with us uh, and some other Apollo folks who will be answering your questions live. And I will actually hop over there to take questions at the Q&A. And please do not spam the chat. Uh, if you have a product or service to sell, Use Apollo to do that uh, in emails and phone calls and all other ways. If you spam the chat, we will boot you and we will bam you forever. Um, okay, let's get into it. So who am I and why am I talking to you? My name is Josh Garrison. I'm our head of content marketing and customer education here at Apollo. And I spent the vast majority of my career as a sales leader, managing teams of various sizes and using tools like Sales Loft and Outreach, Apollo, Zoom Info, Salesforce, you name it. Uh, I did a lot of automation as well, which is something I'm really excited to share with you. So why are we talking about this? All right, you guys work in sales, you know, time is money. And the more time that you spend doing things that uh, don't lead to a deal closing, the less money you're going to get in your pocket. So there's a reason that I'm wearing this beautiful shirt today. Uh, it's because automation is one of the only ways that you can Go on vacation as a salesperson and still hit your quota. You can automate all that work that you were going to do while you're sitting on the beach. You can't go on vacation forever. You have to come back at some point, but automation can really take a lot of the heavy lift off your plate. And I happen to be going to Cancun tomorrow, very timely. So what's crazy about that is the only, the average sales rep, this is according to Salesforce, who studies this a lot, they only spend 28% of their time selling. That's a little insane. Put that another way. Out of every $100 you have, 72 go to something other than making you money. 
you might as well just be shoveling your money into a furnace. So what do you do about that? The answer is you automate what you can. And McKinsey, who are you know a bunch of people with really fancy degrees and stuff, they claim that you can automate at least 30% of everything your sales team does. I think the number is probably in that ballpark, so I'm not going to argue with it. Uh, and let's take a look at what that actually looks like. This is probably your day-to-day -to -day today, or if you're managing a team, this is probably your team's day-to-day. -day. About a third of your time goes into selling, sending emails, making calls, taking demos. The rest of the time goes into things like list building, data entry, writing emails, all that kind of stuff, um, it, going into internal meetings, whatever. So if we can change the paradigm here and automate, let's call 30% of what you do, you can now spend 58% of your time selling sending those emails, making those calls, taking those demos, building your pipeline, and have way less time have to go to things that don't directly just pay you. Uh, okay, everybody said I froze. Um, or not everybody, I've seen a few people saying I'm frozen. Are you guys, uh, am I back? Not frozen, back now. Okay, so we're gonna try and automate as much as we can. Yeah, ignore the numbers here, guys. I was just uh, you know, making a slide, don't worry about it. So what are some of the most impactful things that you can automate? Let's talk through them. I'm going to talk through four today and I'm gonna show you how to build four of them out. The first one is the most important in my opinion. It's reaching out to your inbound leads automatically. So let's talk about this. Ideally, you are generating leads not just through outbound, but through inbound as well on your website, right? And if that's the case, um, the speed with which you get in touch with your inbound leads is incredibly important. So this comes from the Harvard Business Review. They did a study called the Best Practice of Lead Response Management. And what they looked at was how quickly businesses got in touch with their inbound leads and what happened. And what they found was pretty incredible. If you got in touch with somebody within five minutes of them requesting information about your business or asking to talk to sales, uh, you are 10 times more likely to actually connect with them over the phone than if you called them at 10 minutes. Okay, so if you call them within five minutes, you're 10 times more successful than if you call them at 10 minutes. And why is that? It's because when somebody is doing research uh, on your company, they're probably also doing research on your competitors. And when they're ready to talk to you, they're going to go to your competitor's website and ask to talk to them as well. And it becomes a game of who can go fastest, right? Whoever gets to them first is most likely to win. And you see that actually play out in the qualification metrics as well. If you get in touch with somebody within five minutes of them requesting information about you, they are 400% more likely to qualify than if you do it at 10 minutes. And if you guys ever wanna ex experience this for yourself, uh, go request uh, like go to Zillow or Redfin and like request information about a house. You're going to get a call from a realtor in like one second. Um, and it's very similar for your business as well. So that's the first thing I'll show you how to automate. The second thing is how to surface buyers actively researching what you're selling using buying intent. Timing is everything. If you came to my first webinar about building better lead lists, you'll know I've talked about this before. This is what your target audience looks like. Okay. Some of them have never heard of you. Some are aware of you. Smaller portion are exploring your solution and possibly your competitors. Some of them are comparing you to competitors as they're trying to make a buying decision. And some people are ready to buy. You want to hit people at the right time. If you hit them when they've never heard of you, this actually happened to me yesterday. One of you, I think, probably in this webinar, sent me as the first step in a sequence an invite to a meeting. I'd never heard of them before. I had no idea what their business did. There's no way I'm taking that meeting. Like, this is not gonna happen. Pitching there is not ideal, right? And you also don't wanna pitch too late. If you pitch in comparison, when they're already evaluating two competitors and you're coming in you know, late to the party, you're wasting some opportunity there. So the goal is to hit people when they're in that exploration phase and they're looking for, they're aware of what you do, they're aware of the problem that they have, but they haven't yet decided who they wanna go with. And we can do that with buying intent. Okay. The third thing that we're going to talk about is removing sequences, uh, removing contacts from your sequences um, when they their contact information gets outdated. This is incredibly powerful for email deliverability. And I'll kind of show you what I mean. So this has happened to me before. Okay. And the first email of a sequence, I, I do a really good job of building my list. I get 5,000 people, let's say, which is like way too many. Maybe I have a big team, but we just use this number for an example. So I get 5,000 people uh, and I put them into email one of my sequence and I built a great list in Apollo and I get no bounces. And then a few days later, I send another email and all of a sudden I get some bounces. How's that possible? 
The first email didn't bounce. What happened? Why is this happening? This is crazy. What happens? The third email you send, now Apollo is smart, right? And it removes the 60 people who bounced on email too. So you're only emailing 4,940 people, but then there's even more bounces. Why does this happen? It's because people are constantly changing jobs. So if we can automatically remove the people who have changed jobs from your sequences, we can lower the rate of bounces that you're going to have. Super important for your uh, deliverability. Okay. So uh, let's keep going to the fourth thing, automating literally anything using plays. So if you have done the right steps to set up Apollo, integrated it with your CRM, possibly integrated it with data from your product, you can automate anything you want to automate. And I'm going to show you how to do it. So let's hop into the Apollo product and I'll show you guys how to build this out. Here I am in Apollo. Uh, can you guys see the screen okay? Okay, I'm keeping up on the chat. Some people are freezing, some people are not. Okay, we look good. Um, one second, let me just get my bearings. Okay, so here I am in Apollo. So the first thing I'm gonna show you guys, right, is how to automatically work your inbound leads. So going back to the slides. Now you might think I'm just gonna hop into plays and we're gonna build it out. Unfortunately, that's not the case. We need to do a little bit of setup in order to make this play work. So I'll show you how to do it. We're gonna start like so many of our webinars start in the top right hand corner when you go to settings. And what we're gonna do from settings is we are going to navigate over to integrations, okay? So what we need to do to work our inbound leads is we need to integrate our CRM uh, with Apollo so that when a lead comes in inbound, that comes into Apollo and Apollo knows that it's an inbound lead. And you configure that by going to settings and integrations. For this example, I'm going to use HubSpot. We also have a Salesforce integration. And if you use a different CRM, we have a Zapier integration. And you can literally push anything you want with Zapier from your CRM into Apollo, okay? So I'm gonna go to, I'm gonna click into HubSpot. So this is my HubSpot integration. This is already linked. If you guys haven't linked your CRM in Apollo yet, and you want instructions on how to do that, go to knowledge.apollo.io. This is our knowledge base, and you can just search for you know, CRM, and it's gonna pull up uh, how, to in, how to link your CRM with Apollo. But uh, let's go back into here. Okay, so this is HubSpot. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna navigate to contact mappings, and these are fields coming from the contact record in HubSpot into Apollo. And what I'm gonna go I'm going to go here to custom fields. So this is what we're doing. We're going to create a custom field in Apollo that tells us when our leads are coming in that are inbound. Okay. So um, I did that already with this lead source, but I'll show you how to do it from scratch. It's pretty easy. You just hit new field. So again, I'm in contact mappings, custom fields. I'm going to hit new field and I'm going to call this like lead source, something like that. Whatever you have in your CRM, you know, if you if you have inbound leads, somebody has set this up for your company or you have this already, you're going to choose a type. Most often the type is a pick list, which means it's going to pick from a list of values. And then you get the option to check this box. It says this field will map to a read only HubSpot field. It will only be pulled from HubSpot. I'm going to turn that on. What that means is that this is going to be one way. HubSpot is going to push data into Apollo for this lead source field. Apollo is not going to push data into HubSpot. That's what I want because these are inbounds, okay? And if you guys have questions on this, put it in the Q&A tab, not in the chat tab because it will get buried. Put it in the Q&A and I'll try and come back to it at the end. I already did this for a lead source field. So I'll show you guys how I've configured that. It's right here. I'm going to click on it. So I called this field lead source and out of the box, HubSpot gives you a, a field called latest source. It's not ideal, but I used it as an example. Latest source has all of these values associated with it. Organic search, paid search, email marketing. These are all sources where somebody can come to your site from. And I've added one, I've called inbound. I'm gonna use this as my lead source field to build this play, okay? If that was a little quick for you, I'll try and come back to this at the end. Of course, we're recording the webinar, so you'll get to watch this again. But the TLDR here is go to settings, go to integrations, connect your CRM, and then add a custom field. Once you've done that, it's a little bit of setup up front. It's going to save you a ton of time on the back end. It's going to make you money on the back end. We also need a sequence. So what we're going to do right in a second is we're going to build a play to push people into a sequence automatically when they become an inbound lead. 
And I have already built a sequence here. It's Apollo lead sequence. If you don't have a sequence, you can hit new sequence. Even we have a template for you. Hit pre-built and scroll down. There's one that says inbound sequence. You can just use this template and modify it if you want. But what I did is I built one and I'll show you what I did. My settings on this sequence are very straightforward. The first step is an automatic email. As soon as somebody becomes a lead on my website, I want to email them instantly with a link to my calendar. And the way I do that is I set the deliverability settings to be zero minutes. So as soon as someone is added to the sequence, they get added into the into the into uh, that email, okay? Um, the second step is a phone call. And that phone call is due zero minutes after the email gets sent. And what I did here is I created the task for the phone call as a high priority task. So what this is going to do, you'll see how to do that here. You just go edit and assign task priority high. What that means is that when your reps get an inbound lead, they're instantly going to get an email. And then as your reps are in their homepage on Apollo, they're gonna get tasks to call these inbound leads, okay? So now that I've done that, I created a custom field to tell Apollo what my inbound leads are. And now I created a sequence to add those inbound leads to now we can automate it, okay? So I'm gonna go to plays and I'm gonna build this play out. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit create new play. And I'm gonna get some water. Okay, so you'll notice, and I, how did I get here? I just, uh, I went to plays and top right hand corner, it says create new play, I hit create new play. All right guys, so you'll notice that there are a bunch of templates. We have 26 play templates available for you. And you will notice if you click through these and go to secure the meeting that there is one for instantly hitting new inbounds. But I'm going to be real with you. Some of these templates need some love. They don't all do exactly what you want them to do out of the box. This one, for example, doesn't actually add people to a sequence. It does some other stuff. So we're not going to use it. We're going to create a play from scratch. So we just click that on the bottom right of this modal. It says create from scratch. We're going to make a play from scratch. Okay. So... Now I'm here in the play creation wizard, and I'm gonna walk you guys through how this works. At the top, it says target type. I can choose if this play is going to run to people or if it's going to run to companies. Obviously this play is for automatically working inbound leads. So I'm gonna choose people. And now I get to name it, and I'm just gonna say automatically sequence inbound leads. What does it do? Adds inbound leads, inbound lead, ah, I, can, I can type to a sequence. Okay, now I get to choose when this play runs, okay? So when does this play occur? I can choose on a specific date or schedule, or I can choose when a specific event occurs. I don't want on a specific date or schedule because what that's going to do is it's only gonna run this play every day or every week or you know on a set cadence. I want this to happen every single time a new inbound lead comes into Apollo from my CRM. And to do that, I'm going to choose contact created. Okay, there's a whole bunch of different stuff that we can choose in this drop down menu for how to fire this play, but contact created is the one that I want. Now, I'll pause on this for a second. If you have a lot of your contacts in Apollo already, you'll want to create another play to do the same thing when the contact is updated, and I'll talk you through that in a minute. Okay, but for now, we're just going to say, hey, these inbound leads are new, they're going to come into Apollo from my HubSpot CRM. So when that happens, I want to add them to a sequence. Okay, so when a contact is created, now we have to choose a filter because we're creating contacts all the time. So we have to specify for this play which contacts are gonna get added to the sequence. So I'm gonna hit add filters. And this is going to allow me to choose from a whole bunch of different stuff. Uh, Elsa sequences are included. It depends on your plan in Apollo. Sorry guys, I'm looking over at my monitor and just seeing the chat a little bit, okay? Um, so how did I get here? All right, so I chose contact created and now I'm in filters, I'm gonna hit add filters. So what I need to do here, you guys remember that, that lead source custom field that I made earlier. I'm gonna go find it now. So I'm gonna use that, right? It's right here. It's gonna say custom fields and I can add a custom field filter and I'm gonna choose lead source. This is the field that I chose. And now those pick list values are here. So. I can choose which of my inbound leads I want to include for this play, for this automation, okay? So it can be any of the sources. Like, let's say, you know, it depends on how your CRM is set up. Maybe some of your inbounds are uh, referrals and you want to have them go to a different sequence. You know, you could choose some or any. 
if it's any of those values, you could also just go is known. And what this is going to do is it's going to say, hey, if there's a lead where we know the lead source here, meaning there's a value filled out, include them in the play. That works for my purposes right now. So I'm going to do that. And you'll see this has already returned one result. Look at this jabroni, this guy. He's an inbound lead. He's right at a rock. I'm going to hit save filters. Okay. So I've now set up this inbound, uh, this source to go, or this play rather, to go when a contact is created as long as we know the lead source. So now I get to tell it what to do, okay? So uh, that's in the action setting of the play. So out of the box, plays gives you a couple things that are turned on. The first is to create an alert to take an action. I'm gonna turn this off. I'll show you what that does. It's, I don't want it. When I'm in home screen, if I scroll down, I have alerts on the left and I have tasks on the right. I don't want it to create an alert every time an inbound gets added to my sequence because in the sequence that I made, there's a task and there's already going to be a task created. So I don't need that. So I'm going to turn it off. Okay. And now I get to automate an action. So Apollo will automatically run some actions for you. So I'm going to pick one from this drop down list of add contact to sequence. Now, this is where stuff starts to get magical. Okay. I can add a contact to a sequence and I can choose the sequence. And remember, I built one earlier, inbound lead sequence. So I'm going to choose that one. And now I get to choose who I want to send the email from. And this is where it's, this is like so beautiful. I love this. Okay. If your CRM is are already assigning an owner to your inbound leads and you have lead routing at your CRM, you can just send it from the contact owner. That data is going to come in from HubSpot or from Salesforce. But if it's not, and your inbound leads are just coming in and let's say you have a sales team, right? You have multiple people. You can actually choose to round robin your inbound leads between your sales team right here at the play level. Okay. And what that's going to do is it's going to let you choose what users you want to round robin in between. And for me, it's going to be me and Vance Maximus. Uh, and so when the first lead comes in, the email will go from me. When the second lead comes in, the email will go from Vance and it's going to trade off between me and Vance. Now let's say, I was building a very similar play, but for an outbound sequence, okay? If, I, if I'm outbound, automating outbound reach, I can also choose to rotate my mailbox. So if I have five mailboxes set up in Apollo, which we covered that in our deliverability webinar, um, I can rotate in between those mailboxes and the same for Vance. So it's still going to go, you know, one lead for me, one lead for Vance, but it's going to rotate in between um, uh, our, the mailboxes that we send. So I'm going to turn that off because this is an inbound lead play. I shouldn't need to rotate. My deliverability should be good. And now I'm going to hit save. So I just built this. I just built this sequence out, y'all. I mean, it, I was timing myself. I think it took us 10 minutes to build this sequence. And as soon as I hit activate play, as long as my sequence is turned on as well, it's going to put the people who meet that criteria into that sequence automatically. Okay. So we just automated reaching out to our inbound leads. As soon as an inbound lead comes into HubSpot, it's going to go to Apollo. That email is going to get sent and you're going to have a task to call them. You can't work leads faster than this uh, without like just, you know, sitting and waiting on the back end of your website for something to come through. So if you haven't set this play up and you get inbound leads, I highly recommend that you do that. I'm going to take a brief pause to catch my breath because I've been going fast. I'm going to uh, drink some water and I am going to move on to the next play as well. Take a look at the chat. Uh, you can find the past webinars on our YouTube channel. Speed to lead. That's right, Caleb. Can you get inbound leads without a CRM, Melanie? Uh, I'll try and come back to that. Brandon, appreciate you, hype man. Okay, let's keep going. So how do we surface buyers who are actively researching your solution with buyer intent? Let's get into that. This is money. This is magic. So I mentioned at the start of the webinar that I hate building lists. And I hate building lists only because it feels like a lot of the time I know that these people aren't interested in what I'm going to message them, right? Like, I know they don't, they're not looking. They don't want it. I'm just kind of building a list out and like hoping and praying for the best. But now we have intent data and we can dramatically improve the quality of the leads we reach out to. So I'm going to show you guys how to, how to automate part of this process and end up saving you a lot of time. We're going to go back to create a new play. But this time we are going to use a template. I'm going to go to new pipeline. 
and I'm going to scroll down a little bit and I'm going to go for work companies researching your category. And let's look at what this play does. Okay. So what this play does is it says buying intent data gives you insight into which companies, this is a key point, not people, which companies are looking for a solution like yours. So you can reach out during the early stages of research and build a relationship. Okay. What does this play do? It's going to add the accounts to a list. It's going to assign an owner to relevant accounts, and it's going to create a contact or an account task. I'm okay with that. I'm going to hit create. And you'll notice this target type has changed. The last play that we did was for people. This one is for companies. Okay. And we're going to be researching companies, working companies, researching our category. This is already filled out for us from the template. So now we have to choose when to run this play. But unlike the last play, I don't want to do this when a specific event occurs. I want to do this every day. So I'm going to assume that I'm managing a sales team. Maybe I'm managing an SDR team. What I want is I want my team to come in in the morning and have a task where accounts that are that we know are researching what we're selling, are they have a task to go add somebody to a sequence from that account. That's what I want. And I want this play to run at 5 a.m. every morning so that my earliest bird SDR who's gunning hard for a promotion and really trying to get uh, uh, over 100% attainment to quota, they're going to have fresh leads served up every single day. So I'm going to run this play every day at 5 a.m. And it's never going to end. Okay. Now I'm going to scroll down and we're going into filters. Okay. So what segments should be included? I'm going to disable this tips because it's like all up in my face and I'm going to hit edit filters. So very similar to the last play, right? This is where we're deciding who this play is going to run for. And if you scroll down, we can hit buying intent. That's what we're using to generate. Uh, that's what we're using to generate these leads. I've already added one. I've added graphic design service providers, but I'm going to hit edit just so you guys can see what this wizard looks like. Okay. I can choose up to six topics unless... I talk to our sales team, which I will run a poll later in the webinar to get you directly in touch with our sales team where you can get more topics. And you can see that there's a ton of topics available, 1,600 topics. And what's happening here is we are looking, we're you know buying this data and, and collecting data from the uh, around the internet on who is looking for what, who is searching for different things, who is visiting different websites. And we're able to categorize those based on you know, different topics. So for this example, I chose graphic design services providers. So if you are a graphic design agency or a marketing agency who offers graphic design and you chose this, when you hit save, what we're going to do is we're gonna find companies that are in your saved list, that are in your target persona, right? That you, you've already done some prospecting on, but we're going to surface the ones who are looking for a graphic designer or are looking for a graphic design service. And I can hit save. And now I'm down into actions. Okay. So what do I want to do here? Create an alert. I'm going to turn that off because I don't need an alert. I'm going to create a task. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add accounts to a list. So when a new account, when we become aware that a new account is researching graphic design services, I'm going to add them to a list and I'm going to call it researching graphic design. I'll hit enter. And this will allow me to set the account. Uh, it, this will add it to that list automatically. Now I can set a field if I want to do that. I could create an ownership value, for example, if I wanted to set the account owner, or I could uh, set a custom field. I could, I could do whatever I wanted here, but I'm not going to, right? The existing owner of the account, instead, I'm going to create a task for them. Okay. So I'm just going to walk you guys through this again. This is a play for companies researching our category, Every day at 5 a.m. when a new company is known to us who's researching graphic design services. I don't know why this says marketing automation. I'm going to be real with you. I don't know why. But when it's graphic design services, which is what we selected, we're going to add it to a list. And then we're going to create a task for the account owner. Okay. And that task is going to be high priority. And it's going to be due in one day, the next day. And it's going to say, uh, find a great lead at this account they're looking for a graphic designer. And then I can hit save. And just like the last time, I have to turn this play on. But what's gonna happen now is every day at 5 a.m., my SDRs are going to get a task. Whenever somebody has, uh, whenever an account hits that buying intent criteria and is looking for what they're looking for, or the, looking for what we're selling rather, they're gonna get a task to come in here, go to that list, find a good lead and add them to a sequence, okay? Now, 
I can chain plays together. I could build this play to create, to add people to a list. I could build another play to prospect people at the companies on that list and automatically add them to a sequence. That's where plays really starts to get mind-blowingly powerful. It's not just what can you do with one play, it's how can you chain plays together so that they're, they're working to automate more and more and more of your process. And if you're not sure how to do that, say yes to the poll at the end of the webinar, we'll get you in touch with our sales team, they are experts and they will help you get set up. Okay, now we're going to the third play that we've talked about, removing sequences or removing contacts from your sequences when they become outdated. So I'm gonna go back to plays. I wanna drink some more water. I wanna take a look at the chat. Let's see, how do I get leads? I tried cold emailing people from Apollo, not a lot of responses. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, well, I would say there's a lot of variability in, in how to get leads. Like if you're looking for inbound leads, you know, build a website, do some marketing activities. That's like a whole other topic. Um, if we're going outbound, I would say like email is a very powerful tool. It's not your only tool, right? If you go into Apollo, like we have a calls tab and a dialer for a reason. Cold calling is a very, very powerful way of getting in touch with people. And if you use calls and emails together, they warm each other up. Your emails will have a higher reply rate and your calls will have a higher answer rate. So if you're just sending cold email um, and you're not seeing the results that you're looking for, I would recommend to add calling in, but we're not a Q and A yet. You can't distract me. I'm coming back and we're gonna go into this next play. So I'm going to plays and I'm gonna hit create new play. We're gonna use a template again. And this one, we're gonna go to system update. And this one is end sequence for outdated contacts. And I'm gonna hit try it. Okay, what does this play do? It's going to finish outdated contacts from any and all sequences and create a task. So I'll walk you through it. I'll hit create. So this play again, this is a people play, right? And uh, it's for ending sequence for outdated contacts. And it's going to happen when a specific event occurs because I wanna pull people out right away. I don't wanna pull people out on a specific date or schedule. And what that event is, is contacts who have changed jobs or their email status has changed and there's new data available. So because I used a template, this is already filled out for me. This is pre-filled out. But if I wanted to add another layer of filtering, I could just hit add filters or edit filters and I can choose from any of the 65 plus uh, different filters that we have in Apollo, okay? But this one's already done for me. So I can just say, you know, yeah, they've changed jobs. They've got new data available. I don't wanna email them. I'm gonna get a hard bounce that's gonna hurt my deliverability. I want those people out of my sequences. So I'm gonna turn off this alert thing again. I don't know if you guys can tell, I don't love this. I just keep turning it off, no, you know, that's just me. Uh, and then I'm gonna go down to automate these actions. So what is it gonna do? Finish contact sequences. And I can choose the scope. I can have it mark all sequences finished or just a specific sequence. So why would I do that? Because maybe, um, maybe some of the people are in a call only sequence. Right. If you're in a call only sequence, uh, just because your email has changed doesn't mean I can't call you. Now, maybe, you know, maybe you still want to pull them out. It's up to you. But that's why we have it like this. I'm going to leave it as mark all sequences finished. So if Apollo knows now, how do we know this? Right. There's over three million people contributing to the Apollo network and we're getting data from all over the world, all over the Internet to keep our contact information up to date. So when somebody else in the network gets a signal that, hey, this person's email has changed, maybe they got a bounced email, right? Or maybe they got an email from them at their new job. Whatever the case is, you can benefit from that by using this play. If you're not using this play, use it. Go build it right after the webinar. It's super easy. Uh, we're going to finish contacts from the sequence. And then I can choose whether or, not to create, whether or not I want to create a task. And I will go ahead and create a task. And what I'm going to say is, hey, we removed someone from this account from sequences because they got a new job. Please go find someone else. And now your team, they're gonna have this task. It's not the highest priority task in the world. It's medium, maybe it's low. Priority is super important in tasks. It's like a whole other topic, uh, but I can set this as low and I'm gonna hit save changes. And now look at this, we're flying guys. We built three plays, three automations. This is fire. I'm gonna hit turn on, and now we're gonna turn off, we're going to take out people uh, who are outdated from our sequences, improving our deliverability, reducing our bounce rate. 
Okay. Now, we are almost done before I get into q and I'm going to go back into plays, and we're going to talk about the fourth thing, automating literally anything. Okay. How do we do it? Going to go back to create play and create from scratch. Um, hopefully, you guys should have some idea of the power of plays right now. But what I really want to talk through at this moment is the things that we can uh, con we can set on configuration. There's a couple of there's some like really powerful things here. Let's say, for example, Taylor had asked earlier, like, "Hey, man, nobody's like replying to my emails." Okay, well, typical email sequence. I'll have maybe 30% opens and like 2% replies. If you're like not super great at writing copy because you haven't been to our webinar that will be on May 31st about email writing, but maybe that's what you're getting. So you're actually getting a fair amount of people opening your emails. They're just not replying. I can come into Apollo. I can build a play that when somebody opens my email from a given sequence or from any sequence, from, any, from a given person or from anyone, I can add them to a call only sequence or I can create a phone call task. So as soon as somebody opens my email, I can create a task. Oops, that's an account task. I wanna create a contact task. Let me see if I can find it. Bam, create a contact task for the owner, high priority. Call this dude, he opened your email. Bam, and now I'm sending emails only in Apollo and maybe I like hate cold calling and I'm like not willing to grind and I don't want to do it. Well, now I can just create a play that's going to create a task that when somebody opens my email, call them. And they're way more likely, you know, when you call them and leave a voicemail and you say, hey, I just sent you an email. This is this is Josh. Call me back. They're more likely to call you back. Um, there's so many things that you guys can do using plays. It's incredibly powerful. That's it. I, there's so many other things. You know, I, I could spend all day talking about this. I just encourage you all to come in here and, and think about what you can do. And if you're not sure how to get the most out of it, again, I highly recommend you talk to our sales team. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to take your questions. We're going to do Q&A. But while the Q&A is happening, I am going to run a poll. Oh, the poll's running. Would you like a personal demo of what we covered today? Somebody's running the poll. I don't know how we did that. Um, Vote on the poll, y'all. Uh, I, you know, this is a, I, I don't get to work here anymore if you guys don't say yes. So if you want a personal demo, say yes. If you like me, say yes. Uh, but I'll get into the chat. Okay. So chat. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Don't say yes in the chat. Go to the poll and say yes on the poll. Uh, you, you, if you say yes in the chat, we won't see it. So let me go to the Q&A. Why do you use Apollo and not HubSpot sequences directly? Yeah, that's a good question. So I think that Apollo has more power in their sequences than HubSpot. Um, there's more that you can do. There's more personalization. Uh, and we're tied directly to the prospecting data. So anytime you're pushing data from one tool to another, you're creating a lag time and a delay, and you're creating an opportunity for errors. So Apollo is end to end, right? You can get your data from Apollo and you can send your sequences from Apollo. You can use HubSpot as your CRM where you manage the rest of the deal cycle. I just think HubSpot is not quite as robust for outbound. Um, should I always get a leads from a form? I'm currently sending cold emails to strangers. Uh, yeah, I think inbound is always better. Uh, you know, inbound leads, like when I was working in sales, we would fight over the inbounds. Like I really wanted those inbound leads. So um, I would highly recommend that you try and get some inbound flow going as well. Uh, can you send a message to be connected contact on LinkedIn through plays? Uh, I'm actually not entirely sure. Let's, let's see what we can do in plays. I can fire a play from any of these things and I can have the play. Yeah, I can do a step connect. I can have it do a message. I can have it. Oh, that's just for a task. Let's see. You know, I'm not entirely sure. I would say yes to the poll and our sales team will tell you. I know we can automate a lot of LinkedIn, but I also know that LinkedIn automation is a little tricky. So be careful with it. Is intent data available for B2C? Yeah, there's like 1600 filters available for intent data. Some of them are B2C for sure. So you can absolutely do that. Um, okay, let's look at the chat. Um, oh wait, no, I was in Q&A. Uh, how is the second play finding contacts at accounts researching your topic? Okay, this is from Savannah. So yeah, like I mentioned, intent data, we're basically pulling data from a bunch of different providers across the internet. And this works very similarly to how like 
ads are shown to you on Facebook, right? They're, they're aware, they're buying data from all these uh, websites. They're aware of what you're looking for and what you're interested in. And that's how they surface ads to you. It's the same concept, but for outbound sales, super powerful. How long would you wait before the follow-up email in a sequence? I have it set as three days, then seven days. Uh, this is from Tomas. I like that actually. So I try not to email people more than once a week. Uh, so my typical email sequence is three steps over 21 days. Email one on the first week, uh, five or six days later, email two, five or six days after that, email three. Factor in weekends, you get at least a week in between. That tends to have the best results for me. But the next webinar I'm going to do is on email copywriting and on using AI to help you write emails. So I would attend you. I would uh, encourage you to attend that as soon as we get that up. Of course, we'll send you an invite. Um, how many emails do we need to have in a sequence for a decent result? I think less is more, Rahul. So, you know, if you're just sending a ton of emails to somebody, it's like at a certain point you hit that, you know, the definition of insanity is uh, trying the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. The more times you email somebody and they don't reply to you, the worse your deliverability is going to be over time because you're just gonna start landing in spam. So I think three emails is plenty in a, in a like one month period. And if you, you know, you should then be adding cold calls or LinkedIn touches or, you know, both as well. Uh, if you get zero to no responses to your email sequences, this is from Mark, you're doing something wrong. So maybe you're emailing the wrong people or maybe you have a uh, bad copy in your emails. I, you know, it's hard to say exactly what's going on there. Uh, okay. I'm going to take a few more questions. Um, can you help me about spam? Yeah, go to the poll. We should have a way to do the takeover for the poll, right? And have the poll take over the whole page. I'm not sure why that isn't happening. Um, oh, it's because I'm presenting. Oh, let me stop. Bam, here's the poll. All right, if you guys haven't voted on the poll yet, now you have to vote on the poll. I totally messed that up. So I know there's some of you in here who haven't voted. There's 864 of you in here. I'm going to publicly shame you until you vote on the poll. Vote yes. Vote yes for Josh. And not just Josh, just for a follow. Um, okay. So chat. Uh, the accuracy of buyer intent data, it's pretty accurate. Uh, Augusto is asking, does Apollo work for B2C lead gen? Apollo works for a lot of different stuff. But honestly, B2C, like, come on. Let's, you're sending cold emails for B2C. That's going to be hard. It's going to be really hard. So, you know, most people do marketing or they, they look for inbound, they do advertising, they do something else for B2C. Make a play to anyone added to a list, go to sequence. All right, I can show you how to do that, Maxwell. So I'm going to go for people. So let's say I did, uh, I'm going to build a play, right? Let's say I built a play already to add a certain list of people to a sequence or to add people to a sequence or to a list. Sorry, I'm all over the place. Add to a list. I'll show you how to do that. So I'm going to say, hey, uh, when a specific event occurs, or like, let's say every day, um, bam, every day at 5 a.m., I'm gonna add people to a list. Okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna build my list here. And if you have the right account, if you've upgraded your Apollo account, you can do this for net new contacts. You don't have to go and save them first. I have not upgraded my account, uh, so I have to go through this process. But so we're gonna come in here, and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to build out my list. Uh, of like my criteria of who I want to add to the list. So maybe I've already built out a persona and I can just say like, hey, I'm gonna add my chief marketing officer personas. Anybody who meets that criteria, we're going to you know, have those people, I'm gonna hit save. And what I'm gonna do with them is I'm going to turn this off and I'm going to add them to a list. Add to contacts list, okay. And I'm gonna pick it, let's say like outbound. So what I've done here, oops. So what I've done here is I've said, hey, every day, anybody who meets my criteria of being in this persona, I'm gonna add it to a list, okay? And I hit save changes. Now I can create, I can create another play. I'm gonna create from scratch. I'm gonna go people, email people on that list. When a specific event occurs or every day, whatever, that's fine. I'll just do every day. Um, when people are, on this list, what did I call it? I don't remember. New leads, let's call it that. When people are on this list, add them to a sequence. And now I just created two plays. 
The first play is going to automatically find people, and I'm going to round robin it between me and Vance. The first play is automatically going to find people. The second play is automatically going to add them to a list, and I can turn it on. Bam. I just automated some of my, my sales process. I'm not sharing my screen. You guys are amazing. This is hilarious. I turned off the screen share, and then uh, I totally forgot. Wow. Classic. Okay. Great job, guys. Uh, here's what I did. The first, <laughs> I just wasn't looking at the chat. That's so funny. All right. This is the first play I made. Uh, the first play I made was add to a list. So this play says people add to a list on a specific date. And it's going to, I chose a filter for personas. So I just said, hey, anybody who meets my persona, I'm going to do something to them. And what I chose them to do was add to a list. And I called it outbound. Okay. And I hit save changes. Then I created another play, email people on the list. So this play says, hey, it's people. I'm going to email people on that list every day. When they're on my list, it should be here. Um, I don't. Th I don't think it's showing because there's nobody actually in it. I don't know why it's not showing. But you would choose the right list from this dropdown, and then I would add them to a sequence, and I choose the sequence. And so now I just chained those two plays together, right? The first play added them to a list. The second play added people from that list to a sequence. Sorry about that, y'all. That was crazy. That was hilarious. It's like, why is everybody dropping a GIF in the chat? That's super funny. I'm going to take one more question. Um, okay. First period frustrating. Now it's the most wholesome chat ever. <laughs> yeah. What do you recommend to successfully send messages on LinkedIn using plays? I wouldn't like my take on LinkedIn, guys. I, if LinkedIn shuts you down, you're dead on LinkedIn. Um, and they're really aggressive about it. So the Chrome extension, the Apollo Chrome extension has automations for LinkedIn. Say yes to the poll and talk to our sales team about it. They know way more about it than I do. They use it all the time. I can do a webinar on it later, but my take on LinkedIn is I would rather have a task that then I go to LinkedIn and I manually execute than automate everything because LinkedIn is like super on top of this. They're trying to keep automations and bots off of the LinkedIn platform and they will catch on to you eventually and then they will shut you down and then your LinkedIn is gone. And it's, you know, that's not super helpful. Like I don't, I don't want that for me. Uh, I love, I'm now seeing all the messages like, share your screen, share your screen. That's super fun. Sorry about that. Okay. The recording will be uploaded right after this. Um, I'm going to take one more question. Uh, Mitt, thanks for coming. The last question I'll take is, okay, here it is. Uh, what's the biggest competitive advantage of Apollo over outreach? This is from Daler. I would say Apollo over outreach. Outreach is really good at sending emails and letting you like dial people. And they have some tools associated with that. Apollo is really good at everything. You can find people, you can send them emails, you can call them. We have a conversation intelligence feature, which is essentially Gong, that's coming out. You can build your automations, you can enrich your CRM, you can do everything in one place and it's way cheaper, right? Which is also a benefit. So. I've used outreach a lot. I was a beta user of outreach. I don't have anything bad to say about outreach, but if I had to choose one platform, I'm going to pick Apollo. I get way more bang for my buck and everything is in one place. That's what I would say. All right, y'all, the next webinar is on email copywriting. We do these live, which is how you can have funny stuff like me building plays and not sharing my screen. I really appreciate your time. I hope you all have an incredible rest of your day and I'll see you at the next one. It's on May 31st. We'll send you an email about how to write incredible sales emails. Thanks, everybody. Have a good one.